Hi guys, welcome back to Corner Cupboard and this is video two. Um, we're going to show you how to work this twining loom. Um, the first one we showed you how to warp it and get your material on here. Yeah, you can see all my material back there. Yeah, material hoarder. That would be me. Um, so we're going to show you how to get started on this. It's a very simple process and once you get it down um, you're going to be really surprised at how easy this is to make yourself your own little rug. Um, so I'm going to flip you back around. Here is the loom. I did change positions because I need you to see this corner right here. Here's our metal peg. Train! Yep, there's a train. Here's our metal stake, which is going to keep our sides nice and straight. Here's that beginning loop. Now, if you remember in the first video, if not, you need to go back and watch it because that's the important part. We're very tight, nice, good tension. Um, I did go back and tighten up that last end down here where it looked a little loose. So we tightened that up. Move my ironing board just a bit. Now, here's where it's going to get fun. This is where you get to choose your colors. Um, you want to go dark to light, light to dark, you want a solid color, you want a two-tone. This is where your imagination comes into play. Keep in mind, it is not the print of the material that really matters. It's the color. Um, the design in this material is actually going to, it's going to get twisted around and you're really not going to see much of it. So first things first, we're going to start with one strip of material. Now I like to start with the same material that I warp this with because I think once these loops pull in it makes a better blend and you don't really notice it so much. So I have the same material that I warped with. So you take this material come around the back of this peg like this and come through. Remember that loop that I told you to keep two fingers worth of space come through that loop and even this out. So you have one piece of material, one strip like this, come around the loop, the bar, and one the back side in the loop like this. And come up as far as you can. <coughs> Excuse me. The less distance this has to come in, the better it is. So like this. The piece that's on top turn it over and the piece that's on the bottom should now be out here. Take this and come under the next band. Did you see it? Let's do it again. Here's my two. I'm through the loop. Can you see that? Let's see if we can get you a better shot. Like this. So this one is going to go over. This one's coming to the front. This piece go under the next band like this. Now take the piece that's in front. Pull that a little snug if you wish. I do. I like having my ends nice and snug. Take the piece on top, cross over, and go under the next band. Cross over, under the next band. Cross over, under the next band. So you can see, and you can push that up, you can see what has happened. Do you see? Tana Trenda help you get a visual here. So you just, you keep doing this over, under the band. Cross the material, under the band. Cross the material, under the band. You know, with normal weaving, it's under, over. And with this one, it's over, and then under. This is the whole process of twining your new rug. This is it. And when you get to where you've had a knot like this, 
you can take your material and go over it, go under the next band, and you can kind of spread that out just a little, and suddenly your knot is gone. Over, under the next band. And this is it. This is the whole process of twining your rug. Like I said, I like pulling these up to the top because when you take this off, it's less distance. And then you will be able to not have to worry about your loops not pulling in. Now here's where I want to get to. Hopefully that's pretty self-explanatory. You're always going to have your little straggly things like those. Here's where I want to get to. We're too short. T, what are we going to do? Okay, remember at the front when I told you. So you get another piece, another strip of material. And here we go again. Let me pull you a little closer. Sorry, you're on my ironing board, which is on wheels. So we're going to put these two pieces of material together. Remember, fold it over like this. And then make a cut about an inch. Looks like an inch to me. Now in this case, now that you're weaving on here, put your fabric right sides together. When you're warping this, it's not a big issue. Put that through the hole and pull it through. Give it a little pull and voila. Now if you don't want to work with this much hanging out, you can cut it in half and put it here. But in most cases, that's not true. So you just go ahead and put a fresh piece here. Remember, here we go. Side to side, fold it, make your cut, take it apart, flip one piece. Wow, that's a long one. Put it through the hole and pull through. Now you have more material. So now you can keep, continue to work on this. Remember, cross the material under the next row. Cross your material under. Cross your material under. And then keeping this towards the top because I think you're going to find it much easier when the rug comes off to hide your loops at the top. And when you get farther in on this, you're not going to be able to take your fingers and just shove this up here because it's going to be way too tight. Um, at that point, you might want a, a little piece of a dowel rod or um, something kind of firm to help you push that up. Um, you can use anything, really. Anything at all. I'm trying to get to the other end very quickly. So if it seems like I'm going too quick and you can't keep up, I want to show you how to make the turn at the other end. So you're not at a loss when you get there. Because I want you to be able to do that. We're almost there. A few more and then we'll be at the end and I can show you how to make the turn. It's a fun process. I think you'll enjoy it. Um, especially if you like to weave but you can't afford the big looms and you know which those can land you some money. And a lot of times people don't have time they, but they want to craft something. They want to they want to make something. They just don't have time for all that. 
We do, but that's because we're corner covered. Now here we go. Here we are at the end. This is what I want you to see. So let me make some adjustments here on camera. Okay, now we are here at the end, right here. Here is the bar and the last string. Hopefully you can see that. Here's the last string we have yet to do anything with. From here on out, on both sides, this last strip of material and your metal bar become one. You're going to make sure that the last strip and the first strip and the metal bar are always woven together. So when you get to this end and you bring your material over, you tuck it under that last strip of material, but come around the metal bar. Now you're going to come back to the front like this. Here's that piece right here. Now you're going to take this one. I know it's a little hard to see. This is the one coming from around back behind the last fabric strip behind the metal bar. Bring this over in front and go under the one next to it. You have officially made the turn. So here again, you go over and then under. Over and under. Over and under. And you do this all the way back across the front. So now you have major turn. Do you see it? Here's where you went behind this strip right here. The last one is always joined to the metal pole. Turn around and see here's where your two rows are. Now when you get to the other end, do exactly the same thing. Join that last strip of fabric and the metal pole. These will be loose for a little while. They will. But they'll get so tied up and so bound by your weaving that they won't move at all. And then that will be a later one. So that will be video three. There you go. Thanks again for joining us. And uh, we'll get to weaving on this or we'll jump over to the other one. And uh, we will show you how to get to the center and how to finish a twined rag bag. So um, if you have any questions, drop us a line. Um, you can also find us on Facebook under Corner Cupboard. Can't miss us. We have bird houses on a fence post for a picture. Join us there. We have lots of uh, craft ideas, uh, DIYs, projects you can do. So stop on by. Send us a friend request. Love to see you. Love to have you. Thanks.